Good girl. Here. Hey Pheasant Fanatics, this is Dustin with North Point Kennels. I've received a lot of questions from viewers about how to find good hunting land, so today we're going to cover some of the ways that we can use technology to help. So one of the things that we're going to try to cover today is the challenge of finding good public facing land when you are in uh, kind of a modern world here where there's no longer just posted signs, but there's also electronically posted signs. But both of them are not required in order to be um, posted. Uh, it is the job of the hunter to go out and find and identify if private land is posted or not. Um, so if you end up playing the safe card, you have to go to plots lands. Uh, and I wanted to walk you through that process in a modern world where there's these new requirements on it um, and what kind of resources do you have available to you in order to find this public facing land right so the first thing i wanted to show you here <clears throat> is you can go out to google or bing and you can do uh, north dakota game and fish so you can just type ndgf when you do so you should get to uh, gf.nd.gov which is going to pop you out to this site right here. Um, so this is the updated um, North Dakota Game and Fish site. And um, just to kind of fully walk you through the process here, you should get to the root home site. Um, and there is a mobile app here. And keep in mind that the um, map that I'm going to show you shortly here is fully accessible from this mobile app. But there's not only a learning curve in terms of getting the app, um, so this would be by clicking on this app here. Um, you can do it through your phone, and then you can just say the the um, iPhone store or the Android phone uh, or the Android store, and you can go ahead and grab the app. Um, but you can get to a very similar map to what we're going to be looking at today. Uh, in this case here, you can click down to where to hunt. Otherwise, what I'll also end up doing here is I'll put all the, the primary links, the key ones that you end up wanting to use on the site um, in the actual link description here too, just to make it a little bit easier for you. But what you're going to look for here is under hunt, uh, hunting resources, where to hunt. When you click on this where to hunt, you've got a couple different options here in terms of posted and public land and whatnot. Click on the picture there. Um, in order to get out to this this chart here. So one of the things that I recommend doing is, or at least the way that I typically approach it, is I try not to venture too far away unless I'm going to do like a big trip, right? A, a long weekend or something like that. So I'll typically stay within an hour or two hours of where uh, my home is. So uh, today, just for the example, we're going to kind of assume for a moment, uh, we're going to hone in on an area called Valley City. Um, so it's right here in North Dakota. And um, this map, as you can see here, I'm just using my scroll wheel. It's fully interactive. You can kind of scroll around. You can click and drag to look around. And all these red boxes, by the way, are private electronically posted lands. So it just goes to show like at a, a 40,000 foot view, how much of the North Dakota land is immediately off of the table in terms of being able to be hunted. So what I'll do is because I know that Valley City is the area that I want to kind of target or look around here, um, you have the ability to then zoom in. Um, so you can hone in on on Valley City and you could be doing the same thing on the phone. And I really, really use the phone when it comes to um, like I'm out in my truck, I'm looking for a place to hunt, et cetera, right? Uh, the second thing I'll typically look for is anytime I'm going to a new area, I basically want to maximize my return on investment, the ability to go and find multiple places to hunt, even if one doesn't pan out to be as good as I thought it would be, et cetera. So um, this kind of area here where you see um, there's several different options in terms of land available right here. Uh, we've got three or four fields right within this area also. It's not too far from Valley City. And one that I specifically did about two two or three years ago is this spot right here. Um, the challenge with this spot is look at the, the the shape of it, right? It's super asymmetrical. And if you were out just walking with your dog and pheasant hunting, um, it's really hard to know where you're at. So you can actually, within the phone app, you can basically pinpoint your location. So find your lo current location. You usually have to accept you know, a location awareness kind of thing. Um, but it will actually tell you exactly where you're at. And I, I kid you not, I probably looked at my phone about 40 or 50 times while I was hunting on this property last time because I was so scared about um, accidentally converging over to other land. And as a reminder here, let's say I entered um, right at this top section, right? And then I started hunting. I was zigzagging, maybe crossing. Um, this land, at least the way it was last time when I was there, 
was uh, was electronically posted, so you'd have to go out here and check it. Um, but it was really, really sporadically physically posted. So there were signs, but I think there were larger gaps than normal. And I kept finding myself running into the problem that I might maybe the wind is out of the east over here, right? So it's pushing towards the left. So I'm working with my dog against the wind. And what would happen is my dog would get a scent, or I would veer this way. And if the signs weren't consistent and there was trees or whatever kind of stuff in the way it was really hard to not accidentally creep onto this private land right so um the the app is super helpful in that regard uh the next thing that i thought um was kind of a sneaky uh, I, I wish it was probably just the default design of it right away but i want to show you um there's basically layers out here on the nd uh, north dakota game and fish site so when you switch to layers then you have to do an additional step here and switch to show legend. Um, you might have been wondering this when I was showing the original picture of North Dakota and the Valley City area is um, there was a bunch of different marks in terms of what land is. So this is an easy way for you to use this as a legend or a key to understand if it's plots, is it um, wildlife management areas, like what what is the uh, awareness of it, right? So as you can see, we've got a lot of plots over in this Valley City area. The one that we were specifically honed in on was a WPA. Um, I do remember I was, it was duck hunting and pheasant hunting season when I went out there. And I think I actually killed four ducks uh, that were just flying overhead when I was near this marsh here, right? Um, so it's something to consider and be aware of. Also, if it's uh, waterfowl production, um, whether you use lead or steel changes, right? You have to use steel if you're in waterfowl production area. So some considerations right away, but use this legend while you are kind of looking for your hunt uh, and you're out on this site. The second thing that I find to be really valuable out on this location is I will typically start with the street view, which is the default view, because I'm really big on landmarks, right? I'm following 94 the entire way towards the west here, and then I'm looking for where I want to be and kind of my landmarks, right? But as soon as I actually get down to this land and maybe assume for a moment I've never been here before, what I'll immediately want to do is switch over to an aerial view. And in this aerial view, it changes things quite a bit. You can see that, at least hypothetically, it looks like there's a field here. It, you can see that there's a creek running through the center here. So you might have some water. That could be a good thing or a bad thing. Um, when you're actually out in the field and you're trying to kind of recognize where you're at, you can use these markers. Um, but there were ducks everywhere. I thought about going out and duck hunting, but carrying a duck boat this far was really, really a nightmare. Um, but you can see the topography a lot more here, right, when you're zooming in. And as you can see, you're kind of hitting a return on investment in terms of the, the video quality, like how much you can tell is actually there. But at face value, this to me looks like a potential or possible field, right? There's gravel nearby. Um, there's water, there's cover, there's food all over. So these are some of the immediate things that I'm looking for. And the first time I went here, one of the other beneficial reasons that I came here is all of this over here too, right? These were basically like my plan Bs, plan Cs. I might even drive up to it if I am if I haven't been able to pre-scout it and this is the first time I'm here. I can drive up to this and say, oh my gosh, I don't, I don't like this at all. I'm just going to go over here to my plan B, plan C, right? But we've got some between uh, plots and between waterfowl production area. This gives us about four or five options uh, on the table, which is really, really beneficial behind the scenes here. Right? The next piece I wanted to talk about, which is a little bit of a natural extension from this, is that a lot of uh, hunters are now trying to use Onyx Maps also, and I'm not sponsored by Onyx Maps. I don't mind what you use. Um, with the update to the site a couple years ago here, I, I I don't know if it's quite as good as Onyx Maps in every way, but it's competitive with Onyx Maps in many ways now. And it's an app. You don't have to go through the browser and go find the site every single time through North Dakota Game and Fish. Uh, but you can actually get out to this location uh, right on the, on your phone, and you should you can um, be in your vehicle. You can identify where you want to be. You can be out in the field, and you can bring up your phone and say, this is exactly where I'm at, um, instead of having to pay the Onyx Maps uh, subscription, right? And because I hunt multiple 
multiple states, I just buy the Onyx map subscription for several states. I think it's like the ultimate edition or whatever it's called, right? Um, so I, I happen to do it and I kind of use both. Um, I use this site more for my scouting and I tend to use my Onyx maps a lot more for um, when I'm actually out in the field or if I've got to ask for permission from a, a farmer or something like that. Um, uh, that tends to be kind of the dynamic that I use behind the scenes. But this is a nice way if you're new to hunting, if you don't have as much uh, uh, spare money, right? You can essentially do everything that you need to do uh, for the most part from kind of this view. So the next thing uh, that I wanted to bring up here is, um, so I'm gonna share this link in the description, but this is a, a massively underrated resource that we have available through the North Dakota Game and Fish. So every year, actually a couple times a year typically, they will do, um, basically they call it crowing counts or roadside counts, but they've been doing it. I think the statistic that they said is something like over the last 60 years, they've been doing this and they'll drive around and, and they'll explain it in the videos, exactly the metrics that they use to identify what the population is likely going to be but over that many years they've they've found that this is a pretty accurate marker across the board and what this video one of the the long story shorts of what this video is calling out here is that it's mentioning that in general for the state of north dakota the pheasant population is up 30 percent um, so number one, that's a win right out the gate. Um, that's based on the crow counts and also the the roadside counts. I think we have a positive outline here. Um, th this is a, a good scene for North Dakota uh, hunting. And to me, there's plenty of land out there. If I go back to our video or our, our site here with our map, if we scroll in here um, and I switch back to my street view, let's give the example actually that somebody is parked right here. If I'm driving down this road, I see this big area and it's relatively large here. So uh, each of these is 300 feet. So it expands out a bit. Um, if I see any truck on any part of this field, unless it's absolutely gigantic, my, my stance on this is that there's plenty of fields to hunt in North Dakota. There's plenty of birds. I will drive right on past and, you know, let that, that hunter have that field. There's absolutely no reason in my opinion to be stepping on each other's toes, causing a safety issue by having multiple hunters in the same area. Um, I just back off. I feel like it's a little bit of an unwritten rule in North Dakota. I feel like North Dakota is substantially better in my experience on respecting that boundary or that line in minnesota you could have something like this and i'll see three hunters like one one post up here park their truck here one park their truck here and one park their truck here and i'm just like that's way too tight and it's not necessary um so just try to share some love for your other fellow hunters um think about it as if you know if there's plenty of fields around and you were there first you got there you woke up early you put in the time uh, give them that space right there's plenty of other fields to go about here but try not to increase approach on other hunters, let them have a successful hunt, let them have a fun hunt with their, their family or their dogs or just out in, in nature type of thing. But you can see that there's pheasant ha land absolutely everywhere scattered throughout North Dakota, right? Um, there's a lot of opportunities for it. Um, yes, your places like Bismarck and Fargo, um, these are going to be where a lot of your population centers are. So you're going to find more and more pressure physically, you know, within a proximity or a, a radius from those locations. So with me being based out of Fargo, um, sometimes I've got to travel all around, right? And I've got to travel a little bit further. Um, you don't have to do that if you don't want to, but the further you get away from some of these me um, meta mega hubs, right, where a lot of people are, um, usually the less pressure the birds are going to have, they're going to respond a little bit better for you. Um, hopefully it'll be a little less um, on the run type of thing too. So I hope that this kind of modern take on technology and finding places to hunt helps you in your journey forward. And feel free to throw some comments in if, if this helped you, if it didn't help you, if you use some other techniques behind the scenes here. Uh, again, I, I don't think a lot of people think that sharing this kind of knowledge is necessarily a good thing because it increases pressure. To me, there's plenty of land out there, and I think this is totally okay for us to share with one another, right, to, to be able to help one another out type of thing. So keep me posted. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and kind of the, uh, the follow-ups afterwards. And if you like this kind of content or if you like something similar but maybe different on it, I did a, a how to hunt in the winter in the cold, frigid uh, North Dakota kind of temperatures. I did one like that too. If you like those kind of educational pieces, let me know um, and we'll we'll try to get some content out to you. So thanks all. Have a great day.